Welcome back to the Vintage Electronics channel. Today we're going to take a look at this IBM ThinkPad T30, which was a $4,000 laptop from 2002. Now this one was not working when we got it, so let's learn a little bit about the T30 and what we had to do to get it going. Stay tuned. Two thousand two was an exciting time. Windows XP had just been released the previous year, and manufacturers, including IBM, were looking for ways of making their machines top dog and top dollar. The T thirty started at around twenty five hundred dollars in two thousand two, and went all the way up to just over four thousand dollars for the model we have here, which included the dock and the brand new two gigahertz Pentium four processor. Always known for building black bricks that worked, IBM didn't disappoint with the T30. While they did round some corners and soften the edges, it still retains the classic ThinkPad shape we've all come to know and love. Reviewers of the time noted the new Pentium 4 processor was hard to cool in such a small package, which does cause some heat issues in these, but overall they are good performers. An IDE hard drive spinning at 5400 RPM was standard, as was 256 or 512 megabytes of RAM. Intel Radeon 7500 graphics were standard, as was a lackluster SoundMax audio driver, which apparently is Sound Blaster 16 compatible, but it does leave a lot to be desired. After all, IBM did design their machines for business and not gaming. So let's take a look at the one we have here. I picked this up recently from a seller who said that it didn't work, it was untested, he didn't know anything about it. We are lucky enough that it does power up. Uh, we do get to a post screen where the memory checks out, everything looks like it posts, but it will not boot and we end up with an error uh, that correlates to the CMOS battery being dead. So the first thing we need to do is get that battery replaced and get a hard drive in this thing and see if we can get it working. Luckily CMOS batteries are still available on eBay and Amazon for relatively cheap, a couple of dollars really. For the hard drive I decided to go with an M SATA drive, an SSD, and an enclosure that converts it over to IDE. So hopefully this will work in this old of a system. Getting the CMOS battery out of these is pretty straightforward. You just remove the battery compartment and it's right underneath there. There is one screw that we do need to remove to get the battery and the caddy out from the computer, so it's a pretty simple process. So we'll get this screw out here, and then you can see this whole caddy pulls out. Now there is a little Molex connector on the end there that we'll need to make sure we get the orientation right. So now with the magic of television, we'll have the new battery in there already for us. Now double check the position of that connector because you don't want to end up putting the battery in the wrong way and frying anything. Then it's just a matter of getting the caddy back in and getting that Molex connector lined up. It can be a little bit tricky so I like to use a little screwdriver just to line that up and pop that back in there. Then we can get the caddy snapped back into the case where it belongs nice and tight and then we'll get that screw put back in to hold that in position. Once we get the screw tightened down, it's just a matter of putting the battery pack back in the back of the computer and we're done with that task. Now onto the hard drive. For the hard drive, it's really just a matter of removing the two screws on the board that will secure that M SATA drive into the enclosure and the adapter. I wanted to try the SSD to speed up Windows XP a little bit and the machine. I never had an SSD back in the day on that type of machine so it was something I just wanted to try out and see if it works and see if it makes a difference on the performance. I never really had any complaints about Windows XP and the speed of it before. It always seemed to be a, a really good operating system. I was kind of kind of disappointed when they discontinued it but uh, anyway we'll get this put back together and then we can get this part put back into the enclosure and get that installed in the computer. I have to say I do like this enclosure, it seems pretty simple. 
and we just have six little screws that hold the case to the circuit board and then we're ready to get that installed in the computer. Now the drive just slips right back into the bay. Make sure it's seated properly and then the cover goes back on the outside and then one screw in the bottom of it and we're set to go. All right, it looks like the battery did the trick for the CMOS. We're able to go in and set the time now and everything stays like it should. So we'll work on getting Windows XP installed on this thing next. All right, so we've got our installation CD for Windows XP in the computer. So we'll get that going here. We'll select it to boot from the CD. So far, so good. We're going through the boot sequence. Media failure, operating system not found. Well, we figured we'd have that because there's nothing on the hard drive, but we are just sitting there and the drive is going like crazy. All right, well, we'll go to plan B here. And that's cleaning the drive, crossing our fingers that that's the problem. So we'll come in here with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the lens. Can't say I've really ever had that work, but maybe we'll get lucky this time. So we'll clean that off, dry it off, and we'll get our disc put back in there and see if it'll work this time. And what do you know? There's a first time for everything. It actually worked. That is awesome. All right, we're back into Windows XP professional setup. This is something I have not seen in ages. So it kind of brings back a lot of memories. So what I'm going to do is instead of formatting the entire 64 gigabyte drive I'm gonna have it partition off about 40 gigs for Windows I'm thinking about maybe doing a Linux or Ubuntu installation on this machine as well so I want to leave a little bit of space for that so we'll let it go through all of its checks here load all the files and hopefully we'll get into the actual XP installation and a quick restart and hopefully we'll have a Windows XP screen there we go all right so now we're into the actual Windows XP setup screen. I haven't seen this in forever. This is exciting. All right, let's see here. What do we got? Is it going to work? Perfect. And as they're saying here, it's an exciting new look. You know what? I actually agree with that. I haven't seen it in, what, 15 years now? So we'll let this go through all of its install. I'm thinking it should not take the 39 minutes that it's saying on the screen since we're using an SSD, but we'll see. So let's see if we can get this finished up and Windows XP running. And it's getting closer. We're able to get into the part where we put in our name and our organization, get through some extra little setup things here, put our product key in which these things are available all over the internet now, so I guess they're not really that big of a secret. So let's get that typed in, and after that, we should have a few more setup things and be booting into Windows XP. And with any luck, we should be getting a Windows XP professional desktop anytime. There we go. That's something I haven't seen in years. I'm actually impressed with how easy that was. I'm also impressed with this little laptop. Now, it's had a hard life. It's actually you know, kind of worn out. The keycaps are glossy. There's some typeface missing from them, but the screen's still bright. It still works just fine. I'm excited to have the dock on the back of it. That's something I've never had with a ThinkPad before, and it adds extra display options, all your parallel and serial ports. Uh, the computer actually itself is pretty fully featured too, taking a look at the back of that. Uh, it actually even has an S-Video output on it, which I thought was pretty neat for a laptop. But overall, a neat little setup. ThinkPad buttons across the top, volume controls. This is when they introduce the gray function keys on them, and the gray enter key uh, does have the track point nub and the touchpad, which was something different for the day. Uh, inputs and outputs for audio on the side. You have two PCM CIA card slots which are awesome. That was something that, uh, you know, a lot of laptops only came with one at the time. So a lot of expandability on it. Now on the other side of the machine, they have their ultra dock, which uh, you could put a DVD drive in like we have, uh, or a CD drive, just overall a great little laptop. So I'm really glad that uh, you guys came along on this journey with me. Stay tuned for next time and we'll see what else we can get into.